cold bit. How was how was your how was your break, sir? Good. Just rested, did nothing. That's facts. Can I mark you present early today? Sure. Sure. I'll mark you present early. Uh, I don't know. I, I've actually just been dealing with the problem where my right leg goes numb when I sit. He's been trying to rest He's that. He's sitting for a long time. Yeah, it co coincidentally happened when remote learning started. And I had to start sitting. In the same also, spot. I hear you skip on leg days. I skip on leg days. Actually, they help me because it kind of removes it. You know, it's only when I'm sitting. It's only when I'm sitting, not when I'm uh, standing. Probably something to do with my nerves, but okay. Uh, so, so, okay. So this is the next uh, thing I want to go to. We're still going to go into, um, still going to go into, still going to be talking about energy, but we're going to be going into sprint. Now, before I go into that, before I go into that, It's all about your homework, right? So I graded your homework. I gave everyone that got like a hundred. Uh, I mean, I graded everyone that gave the work on time a hundred. I gave everyone that that did it late a ninety. I am still checking for work. Whether or not you did the work, as long as you show me that you did the work, I gave you a hundred. Uh. So I, I, all the answer keys are posted for each assignment, guys, up until 5.5, .5, obviously. Uh, here's the thing, guys. I'm not going to babysit you guys anymore about whether or not you plagiarized or copied your work because it's just too much effort for, for my part. Because in the end, if you can't translate the homework results into test results, it doesn't mean anything anyway, because exams are 50% of your grade, as per your grading policy, right? Which is, and only 25% is from homework. So even if you do well on the homework and then you get like hundreds on your, all your homeworks and you get 25 points, if you just bomb your exam, you lose 50 points, right? So exams are worth more and your exams are basically homework questions. Your homework questions are just preparation for your exams. So I'm not gonna check for plagiarism anymore. Hopefully you do it, you legitimately attempt to do them, right? And when you get stuck, when you, when you do Google these answers, at least try and learn how they solve the question. Right? Well, I do do all pretty much all your practice problems in class. You shouldn't struggle. I mean, or rather, well, I do do your practice problems in class. Uh, if you somehow forget, if you forget the, if you forget the practice problems, what we did, maybe need a little bit of help. Go and Google it. See how the how the Google answers did it. Right. See if you can understand what they did. If they use some random variable is not what you learned in class, maybe you know what it is, right? Maybe if they use, I don't know, they use you. You is definitely something. You is definitely means something. And if they write like you is, I don't know, you is MGH. Maybe make a guess on what you means. Right. So just use what you learned in class to help you. I'm not going to check for plagiarism anymore. 
this is really just on you guys, right? If you want to attempt the homework legitimately, right? Maybe use Google and like learn how to solve the problems. Uh, learn how to solve the problems. It's fine, right? You actually, at least you're learning something in preparation for the test. But I'm not gonna check on you guys anymore. I'm not gonna babysit you guys anymore. Um, is this a trick? No, is not a trick. No, is not. A uh, okay. Also, as you guys know by now, there is a test the next week. There is a test next week on the twelfth, right? Next Monday. Uh, I I gave you pra I attached practice exams here, so there are two practice exams. There, I mean, yeah. So these two are just continuations of one another. Right, these two are just continuations of one another. Uh, so they're basically just one entire exam. The answer key is over here. And the answer key is over here. Now, on here where it says energy test 2.13, right, energy test 2.13, it says 2.13 because I gave it on February 13th last year to my last class. So this is an actual test that I gave my students. This is an actual test that I gave my students last year. Now, will you guys get the same test? No. Will you get similar questions? Yes. I can make however many questions, how many variations of question I want to. So this is, this says 2.14. What does that mean? It means it was given on February 14th. So now you know that I, this was a two day test that I gave my students. And this was 25 questions in total. This was 25 questions in total. 25 questions in total. The answer key is over here. Again, you just search, there's an answer key. No. No, that's fine. So yeah, again, the best the best way is to do your homework questions, routine, re repetition, practice. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. That's it. If again, like this is like a test I gave my students last year. Last year, guys. Last year. But I didn't have to try so hard to change up the questions because they all took it in class. But I got a question. Yeah, I have an answer. Did you did you increase the the test grade percentage? Yeah, it says right here. Up from 45%. Oh, okay, okay. I decreased the lab percentage down from 20. So I put 5% into attendance and then another 5% into exams. The 10% is basically, it was distributed into the other uh, portions. What else, what am I doing? Here? Oh yeah, force on a spring. So this is a, maybe you guys can see. So I'm gonna prep. What is spotlighting for everyone do? I'm gonna click this. I'm gonna click the option that says spotlight for everyone. Continue. Sure. All right, I'm spotlighting. So this is a spring scale. This is a spring scale. This right here, you see a spring. All right, you see a spring here. We're still on the energy unit. We're still going to be talking about energy, but we do want to talk about this too. And if I pull on the spring, I pull on the spring and I stretch the spring. And what this does, what the spring scale does is it measures the amount of force I apply on an object. You can't quite clearly see it, but it says Newton's, it says N. 
And these numbers right here, it says 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And it measures the amount of force I apply on the spring. Right now, I'm applying a Newton, a force of 30 Newtons. So that's how that works, right? This is a spring scale. And again, you guys would actually, this would be a lab, right? By the way, guys. This would be a lab, but again, if I apply, if I put a weight on the spring, if I put a weight on the spring, you can see the amount of force it pulls on the spring. It says 10 Newtons, which makes sense because this is one kg. One kg, the force through gravity formula is mass times gravity. Well, if your mass is one kg and your acceleration due to gravity is 9.8, 9.8 times one gives you around 10 Newtons, which is what this spring scale says. It says that the force due to gravity is 10 Newtons. So let's go back to the slide, right? Let's go back to the slide. So there's a formula to measure the amount of force that when you apply on an object, you basically uh, stretch or compress the spring. Right, so you have, right, and you apply a force and you stretch the spring. K is a spring constant. K is your spring constant. What is a spring constant? Well, it's basically a measure, a measure of how hard or easy it is to stretch a spring. And that's what the spring constant measures. So the higher the spring constant, the harder it is to stretch a spring, right? I'm sure maybe some of you have uh, played with springs before. Some of those, some springs are really easy to stretch, right? Some springs just like kind of uh, the spread uh, very easily. They kind of stretch very easily and they're not, they're not too stiff. Whereas others are very stiff and, and very hard to stretch. So the higher your spring constant, which is K, so the higher the K is, the harder it is, the stiffer the spring is, okay? The higher the K is, the stiffer the spring is. And X is how far How far, how far the spring is, uh, is away, the distance of the spring from your equilibrium position, right? So this is your equilibrium position. This is your normal rest position. And then X measures the distance in which you stretch that spring, in which the spring is how far away is the spring from its equilibrium position, right? That's what X is. Now, this is something that you're gonna find a uh, very peculiar. Fs is the restoring force, or the force with which the spring wants to go back to its equilibrium position. It's basically if you ever, uh, if I'm applying on the, if I'm applying a force. If I'm applying a force on the spring right now, what do you guys think I feel? Do you, can you guys describe the feeling I, I'm uh, exhibiting right now as I'm pulling on this uh, on the spring scale downward? You're holding the pressure. Say that again. You're holding the pressure because it's pulling you down. The spring is pulling me down, or am I pulling it down? No, the spring is pulling you down because you're like you know holding it and the spring um, is pulling me down. You kidding, right? I'm pull, I'm pulling this. Oh, I I'm didn't pulling see the part, spring no. down. Are you the spring? No, I didn't see the part. 
I'm applying a force, yeah, but there's some there's someone that DM'd me or I said in like a private message that is pretty good. The spring wants to go back to its original position. If, if you guys were here, you would feel it, right? You would 100% able, be able to feel it. You would feel it. I'll, I'll describe to you guys as best I can, like what I'm feeling, right? So as I'm pulling this spring, this spring wants to go back. It wants to go back to how it's normally, well, how it normally was. It wants to go back to its equilibrium position. Right? So what I'm feeling right now, yes, I'm applying a force on the spring. But the spring also wants to go back to its original position. So let me draw it, right? I think it's really easy to draw it. So while I am applying a force downward, all right, I'm applying a force downward on this spring. The spring wants to go back. The spring innately, there's a, the spring what desperately wants to go back to its original position, right? There's a, there's an upward counteracting force on my hand. And that's what FS is, right? FS is your restoring force. That's what FS is. That's what F is. Now I want to teach you the region's way. This is the actual law. This is the proper way to decipher this formula, right? The formula of, well, FS is equal to negative KX, and that's the actual law. What I'm going to teach you guys right now is just for region's questions, the way it does it on the region. So on the regions, they don't write the negative. Uh, I don't understand why they don't write the negative. Uh, I mean, I do understand to make it a little bit easier. So on your region's uh, reference table, they write like this. They write that FS is equal to KX without the negative sign. And that means a lot. That is very significant. That is very significant. Why is that significant? Because on the region's, I am presenting something. Can you guys not see it? No. I'm 100% sure I'm presenting something. Anyone else have a problem? Hello? You can see it? I mean, I'll share it again just for you. No, it's showing. Okay. It, it says you're, you're sharing something, but I don't see it. I tried sharing it again. How is it for you? I can see. I still don't see it. You still don't see it? I, I can. Let me just. How about now? No. No. Can you rejoin? Got you. I'll, I'll wait for it. Uh. How about now? You good? I see you now. All right, cool, cool. Um, so for the regions, it's actually a little bit different because what I showed you before in the previous slide is actually how it's done in, in physics, like in, in general, right? But in regions, in New York State, FS, F sub S means a completely different thing. FS means force on the spring. FS means force on the spring. So if I'm pulling something down, that's FS. So for regions, that's what F sub S means. Now, 
if you ever intend to take engineering or, or any type of major that requires uh, entry level physics, this is not the correct way to do it. The New York State way is not the correct way. Uh, but right now, I am just teaching the regions way, okay? So FS means force on the spring. So whatever force you're applying downward, that's your force. That's your force. Uh, and, and it's positive. So there's no negative there anymore. All right, so that's what this is. I marked you here. Yeah, yeah, I marked you here. Have a great day. So F sub S for you guys means the force acting on the spring. So if I'm pulling the spring down, if I'm pulling the spring down, my hand is applying a force on the spring. So F sub S is my applied force. And that's my, that's F sub S. So that's how it is going to be for regions, okay? That's what F sub S means. I mean, it even says in the regions reference table. Yeah, F sub S right here. F sub S is force on a spring. All right, let us do your attendance poll. Actually, I don't even care. Let's see yeah, Let's do your attendance poll. Let's block that. So again, remember the formula on your regions, again, the formula we're gonna take is F sub X is equal to KX. That is the formula we're gonna go off of, okay? We're always gonna use this formula. So as the force exerted on a spring increases, the deformation increases, of course, the pole. And by deformation, what I mean by deformation, I mean deformation is as a force F, deformation is X, okay? So force is F, deformation is X. Deformation is X. So for the- wait, wait, what's so deformation again? Basically how far you are from your equilibrium position. Basically, on the bottom right here, deformation is how far you are from your equilibrium position. So how far you stretch the spring? How far is your oh, spring? Oh, okay. Also, how, how far the spring stretches? From its original position. Okay. Or compresses, or compresses. Because again, you can't push a spring together. This is your attendance wall, by the way, guys. Oh, do, 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 do. you know, guys, we don't we don't have like a day off until May thirteenth. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, guys, I'm gonna stop the poll. You had enough time. Yeah, I see you chose wrong choice, it's fine. So now for the region's formula, the correct answer is linear. So this, for the formula, Fs is equal to Ks, I mean, KX, yeah, it, it's linear. Think about it, guys. Look at the bottom GIF. If I apply a force of 13 Newtons, I stretch my spring by plus 13 centimeters. I apply another 30 Newtons, I stretch it by another 13 centimeters. And so there's a linear relationship here. 
for each added force, I got a very set added uh, elongation or deformation. Right? And so a linear graph would look like this. And an exponential graph would look like that. And an inverse graph would look like that. All right? So there's a very linear relationship there. So this gift is for uh, the non-regents formula. I don't, it's not really required. I, I just want you to notice the relationship here. Uh, again, it's not your regents formula. I feel like this is a mistake giving you two types of formulas. I feel like this gift, this gift is too, too good not to show you. Just ignore the fact that this is not a linear, this is an inverted, this is an inverse uh, relationship, which it, it actually is. But this is not for your regions form, okay? This is not for your regions form. But the thing I want you guys to notice, the thing that's actually important is, if you take a look at the equilibrium position, You see that as he pushes into the block, into the spring, that's X, right? How far you push something, how far it is from your equilibrium position is X. And this blue thing right here measures the force, the spring force or rather. So you can see that while it doesn't, while your force doesn't increase at a linear rate, it, there's like plus 1.5 here and it's like plus 1.3. That's just due to, due to human errors, all right? But as you plot a line of, line of best fit, you see that the line is more or less uh, constant, right? There's a line of best fit. The things that mess with this experiment is the fact that obviously there is a force due to gravity and he is, the block is kind of slanted as he pushes into the spring, right? The block kind of is slanted. So there's a, there's a few errors here due to human error. And that's why you see like the uh, discrepancies in the spring force. You kind of see that it's kind of like slanted, right? That's just, that's just human error, right? It's just human error. But again, I, I just want you to notice the relationship here. Okay. So let's do some practice problems. I'm gonna do this for you guys uh, because I do think that I do want to draw. It. Actually, I'm gonna draw. Uh, gonna draw a few things. Actually, not do everything. I'll do the first question. So a spring has an unstretched length of 0.26 meters. The spring is stretched to a length of 0.51 meters. Okay, stretched to a length of 0.51 meters. I know it's not like the most magnificent drawing, okay? So you stretch it to a length of 0.51 meters. And it stretched that length because there's a 20 Newton weight attached to the spring. So there's a force due to gravity acting on the spring. So that's 20 Newtons. And you wanna find out what your spring constant is. That's K, right? We wanna know what K is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the formula, your region's formula, Fs is equal to Kx, all right? So what do we do here, guys? Solve for, no, we're not solving for x. We know what X is, we're solving for K. We want to know what the spring constant is. What do I put for FS? 
What do I put there? Twenty. Yeah, I put twenty newtons here. Okay, x is going to be point twenty six. You're correct. Why is it point twenty? No, it's not point twenty six. Actually, is not. Guys, I'll redraw it. Actually, no, I won't redraw it. But no, k is your spring constant. Your force through gravity is 20 newtons. All right, so let's redraw this, right? This is my equilibrium position. All right, this is my equilibrium position. Fs is gonna be 20. Why is Fs 20? Because your Fs, F sub S, on regions questions means, F sub S means force on the spring. What's acting on the spring right now? What is my force acting on the spring to make my extended length 0.51 meters? Yeah, you're forced to do gravity. My weight, there's a Newton, there's a weight attached to this spring that's causing it to extend its length. So Fs is 20 Newtons. Fs is your force due to gravity. And we want to know what K is. Well, what's X? Again, X is how far you are from your equilibrium position. How far is this new stretched spring spring from my equilibrium position? That's the length of the new one, but that's not how far it is from my equilibrium position. Is my screen blocking this or something, guys? Is Am I blocking something? Important, I mean. I know I'm blocking the screen, but am I blocking something important? It's not. It's 25, point 0.25. I'll give you guys the benefit of the doubt, right? Because... Because you are this new length. Is 0.25 meters away from my equilibrium position. All right, right? Because here, this is 0.25. Are you okay with this? Are you okay with why x is 0.25? Please let me know if you have any questions. Please raise your hand. So now you divide 0.25 on both sides. I get 80 Newton meters. Questions. There's another practice question I want to do. I'm going to raise this in like uh, 20 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Green is hard to see. Yeah, I'll use a different color. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Let's do this question. What are my notes? Quick. We have three minutes left. We're just, we're still going to continue this tomorrow, but I would like to see this done. I would like to see this question done. Come on, quick, no one's, no one's, no one's. That's not your force to do gravity. No, no, that's not it. 
Read the problem, guys. Don't just look at the units. K is equal to 68. K is equal to 68 newtons per meter. There's an entire second line here, guys. I know most of you guys looked at 68 newtons. It was like, well, that's my force due to gravity. Uh, 12 newtons. Now, you don't really know if it's your force due to gravity. It just tell you that it's your... Uh, that it's a 12 Newton force downward. You don't know if it's your applied force, right? You don't know if you're pulling the spring down. You don't know if it's a weight. So it's better off to just say applied force, like downward. What are you, try, what are you guys trying to find? Come on, there's really only one variable, guys. Oh, it says applied. Oh, yeah, yeah, it says applied. It's applied. Yeah, yeah. Come on, there's only one variable left. Yeah, yeah. X, yes, we are trying to find out what X is. So this is the formula. What, what's the force on the spring? Well, your force on the spring is your applied force, so it's negative 12. And so your K is 68. X is that, you divide by 60 on both sides. Uh, you get 0.174 from my previous class. I solved it. Obviously, I'm not a magician. I have just remembered a number from my previous classes. Actually, I think, I think this is 0.76. And that's the answer. Right, you divide, you just plug in, divide. Divide negative 12 by 68, you get 0 0.0, I mean 0.176. Guys, this is the last question I'm doing today. The bell is here, and I just want to go. All right, guys, have a good day. See you guys tomorrow. If you need it, I'll, I'll have it tomorrow, too.